Inside with Sister Chicks Quilting, and welcome to my channel today. You know, I don't know if I can see any of you. Are you out there? Oh, it's me that's hiding. Here I am, hi. <laughs> I'm behind a giant stack of whips, or works in progress. And you know what? They are weighing heavy on my mind. I'm telling you, I want to get these done. And that's what our video is all about today. I've got some helps that is going to help you get through your whips. Now, before we start, if you like my channel and like what you're seeing, I would love it if you would subscribe, give me a thumbs up, or share it with your friends. And above all, keep the comments coming. I'd love to hear what you have to say. I love it when you tell me I inspire you or encourage you. And I love it when you help me and give me tips and tricks or suggestions. So let's keep those comments coming. Now let's get started on today's video. I'm gonna slide this aside just so you can really see that I'm here, because I promise I'm here. So I have two very important time management tools that I use to get things done. But as you can see, I haven't been using them on this stack. Here is the first one. This is it. It's the old get her done list writing things down. You know, writing things down is so important. Nowadays, if I don't put something on my calendar and write it down, I'll miss it. And I listen to a lot of successful people and they always write things down. So write it down. Get a piece of paper. I made a cute fancy list because I like cute and fancy. And then I filled it up with my whips. Check it out. It is full. And you know what? Uh, I have to say, some of them I have been hanging on to for two, maybe three years. I'm not proud of it. Do you ever get where you just can't handle it anymore? So you throw it up on a shelf? Well, that's what I've done with some of these. And then others, just I don't know what my excuse is. But here's my second tool. You know what this is? This is just a kitchen timer. And at this point, I'm wondering why I don't have one of those little chicken kitchen timers, because that would be perfect for my quilt shop. But I just have my regular black and white kitchen timer. And I am going to set it. I'm gonna start out working in 30 minute increments, and I'm gonna set it and just plow through as hard and fast as I can for 30 minutes. And at the end of 30 minutes, I'm gonna get up and go get a drink of water, whatever I need to do, eat a piece of chocolate, but I'm gonna stop and give myself a little bit of a break unless I'm super energized and I wanna set it again for another 30 minutes. But I think I'm gonna give myself the break each time because the body needs a break, right? Our soul needs a break. Well, looking at this list, the most embarrassing one, well, one of the most embarrassing ones <laughs> is on top. Let me show you this one. Look at this huge green bag. It has two pillow forms. This was for a friend that I worked with. She wanted me to make sofa pillows out of her grandpa's sweaters. I whipped this one out really fast and it's ready to go on a pillow form. But this one, I just could not get excited about it. You know why? Because it has this big metal zipper. However, I'm going to finish this. This one has been on a shelf for three years. And as you can see, it takes up a ton of room and I am just sick of it not sick of the pro project, sick of having it around. Here's another really embarrassing one. My Christmas quilt that I made last year. Why is the binding just sitting on it like this? Oh, that would be because 
I started binding it and something happened. I needed to be somewhere, do something, and boom. I'm gonna do this one first. I pulled it off and left it, so I'm gonna put it there. I think I'm gonna set all of these whips by. Oh, real quick though, I want to tell you something. They're not all quilts. For instance, let me find one. Okay, here's one. Look at this to-do list. It says, create a shopping bag for my projects that need fabric. Do you ever go to the store and think, darn it, I left that panel home or I left something home that I need to match fabric to and you've got it somewhere on your shelf. Well, I'm going to find a little shopping bag and I've got two projects like that. This is one. My sweet friend Cindy gave this to me and I just love her to death for it. It's so cute. Look at these panels. They are darling little animals. This is a panel by Moda and she actually got this at a quilt shop and it's called Mary Village, I believe. Yeah, Mary Village. And she made a Christmas quilt with houses and these fun little animals. Cindy and I are both realtors. And when she sent me this to quilt, I was so excited because I've always wanted a house quilt. But all I have is the panel and the pattern. I need to come up with some different, some fabric that matches it for the rest of it. So that is gonna go in my shopping bag and I'm gonna put it in my car. And then I'm going to check it off. And my other shopping one, do you remember when I showed you this adorable panel cabin in the woods? It's so pretty. And I bought four pieces of batiks that go with it, but I need to buy some more. So this and this is going in a shopping bag in my car. So when I stop at a quilt shop, I know what to buy. And you know what, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna move these right out of the way right now. I'll tell you about all of these other whips as I make them, but check it out. It's a substantial pile, friends. But for now, I'm heading right to my machine and I'm gonna set my 30 minute timer and I am gonna start and hopefully, I don't know how long it'll take me to finish, but I'm gonna get that Christmas bear quilt bound right before your eyes. I am ready to go. I'm going to set it for 30 minutes. Set it right here so I can see it and off I go. Ta-da! I'll show it to you in a second. But I have got two minutes to spare. Well, so I finished it by going 30, 75 minutes. Actually, I finished two minutes early. And this is my Christmas bear. This corner of his hat right here gets a pom-pom or a tassel or something. Not gonna worry about that. I am so excited to have it bound. What I'm gonna do right now is this. I just earned me a check and I'm going on to my next project, but I'm gonna kind of skip and I'm gonna go down here. On my break, it says, I'm gonna go find a bag I want to use but right here, create shopping bag for projects that I need fabric for. And I'm going to create that and put it into my car. And I'll do that on my break. Then I'll come back and check it off. I've had this bag and never used it. It seemed appropriate and it earned me another check on my list. Yay. Okay, on to the next project.
This is the very last border I'm sewing for the gnome quilt. Oh. And did you hear my, uh, my timer just go off? I did a few sloppy things because it was a little tiny border and I could just lay it flat. And this is one of the sloppy things I did. I didn't measure my border. I just kind of cut it a little bit longer. And I'm going to whack that off. I'll lay the ruler straight with this edge down here. I'm going to go ahead and do that and press it. Pick out a backing, and I think I know what I'm going to do for backing. And this will be ready to go on the long arm tomorrow. All I have to do is press this, ready for long arming. So, I finished the border on the gnome quilt, and it's just going to take one with the fabric piece to back it. And I think I'm going to use this little piece of some Lori Holt fabric that I have. It's B Basics, but it's it matches with the green in the trees. So, I'm going to go ahead and cut this and this is my binding that's already made, and I'm going to put this in my binding drawer. I have to show you guys my binding drawer because it's so much fun, it's full of binding. So my binding drawer is here in my calyx, and it's this drawer, and this is what I have in it. This is for the gnome quilt. This is for the Jacob's Ladder quilt already made up. So I need four inches all the way around on the quilt when I put a quilt on the long arm. And this one I'm going to do just right at four inches. So I've laid out my quilt right on top of the fabric. And then I'm going to come down here. I'm just going to cut it with my little thither. Look at that. I was able to check that off. Good morning. I'm working away on my list and I've got to cut the border for Jacob's Ladder. I'm not going to be able to quilt it because the fabric that I want, the whole shop of Maggie's on Main is going on sale for their anniversary sale. The entire shop would be 20% off and that's going to be on August 26th and 27th. So I'm going to wait and I'm going to get it all ready to quilt and I do want to put some of that feed sack from the line on the back of it. I think that would be really great. And this is the backing. I'm going to go ahead and cut it and sew it together and get this all ready to go. Then I've got to go downstairs and quilt my gnome quilt. While the gnome quilt is quilting, I'm going to come upstairs and do the cutting and the sewing for the backing. And as soon as the gnome quilt is done quilting, I'm going to put on the Christmas quilt, which is this one. And while it's quilting, I'm going to make the binding because I should be able to finish this one today. I've got the backing and everything. Pretty excited about that. So I thought I'd need some help. I put on my Wonder Woman t-shirt. Let's hope I can really move as fast as Wonder Woman moves. I'm going to set my timer and run downstairs and quilt. I could watch this quilt all day, but I've got to get upstairs and prepare those other backs. And FYI, it takes time to set up a machine so I've got like three minutes left of my 30 minute increment. So here I go up to my sewing room. You know what? I forgot to put this quilt on my list. It needs a binding. Back in Sister Chick's quilting room. Off I go. I'm going to pin it so it's even all the way, and I'm going to sew right along the selvage, but not really on the selvage. Let me tell you about selvages and quilts. They don't, 
when you put a selvage on the backing of a quilt, it pulls and there's a tight spot. So what I do is here's the selvage and I will sew about this far in from the selvage, about a half an inch. And then I go along and I snip the selvage. I don't trim them, I just snip it. And by snipping the selvage, it relaxes it and you don't get that really tight piece on your backing of your quilt. Now I am going to snip this selvage like I told you, and I'm doing it about every inch. It will be so much nicer on the back of the quilt. It will lay nice and flat. And then I'm gonna go ahead and iron this down in the quilting studio on the big ironing table. I just heard my quilting long arm being. So that means I can check off the gnome quilt. It also means I can check off piecing the backing of the Christmas quilt. You know what I need to add on here is bind my uh, red, white, and blue flag quilt. There was room for one more, so I put it on, but check it out. I'm feeling good, and I'm gonna go down and kind of take a break because my 30 minutes is almost up. I can hear it ticking away and see. Yep, I'm just about done. I just know my friend is going to love this. I'm so excited. Let's see. There you go. Well, gotta get binding and get the Christmas quilt on. <gasps> no rest for Wonder Woman. I want to show you my list because look at all these check marks it's getting. Let's see. Um, bind gnome quilt right here. And just above it, look what I did. I scheduled three one hour personal sewing sessions for me. The reason I did that, I like to do some sewing that I don't want anybody to know about for some gifts, and I don't know how I'm going to get it done. Hour and a half, and I'm gonna be done with personal sewing for the day. Ooh, that excites me. Now I'm going to bind the very last one, bind the red, white, and blue flag quilt. But first, I'm gonna show you the gnome quilt. No, I'm gonna make you wait. I'll show it with the flag quilt. Okay, so this is my 4th of July quilt that I'm embarrassed to say has been hanging on my wall. Just as an FYI, Look at the batting, it's kind of thick. That is because I wanted it stiff so it would hang good and not be limp on my wall. So I have a layer of 80-20 and then a layer of wool on top for definition. And this is just the back. I'm setting my timer for 30 minutes. Not sure I can get this quilt done in 30 minutes. The gnome quilt I got done in under 30 minutes.
Okay, I'm gonna do this right in front of your eyes. Ta-da! Look at all of my checks. Yee-ha! Let me show you. This is my red, white, and blue quilt that I made for the 4th of July. And I know the border is wavy. It's to do with the really tight quilting pattern and it got a little away from me. I just, I'm just thankful it's not a customer's quilt. But what do you think? Woo woo! I love it. Let me show you what's behind it. Ta-da! Isn't that just the cutest? Oh my gosh, my friend is going to love it for Christmas and it is done, 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 done. In fact, I'm going to show you the binding up close because I think it just turned out adorable. It's a little Lori Holt binding that I found and it's Argyle. Yeah, like Argyle socks. So this is the back and it looks really good. And then if you look, I think I showed you before, you can see the little gnomes. So she's a gnome crazy chick. So she's going to love it. Well, what do I have next here? The Christmas panel quilt is still quilting. As you saw earlier, the pattern is really intense. Oh, I'm gonna work on my woven plus quilt that I made. You remember this quilt from a couple of videos ago? Yeah. Well, this is what I chose for the binding. It's really, really bright. And I did end up putting it in the quilt and I had this that actually went with it. If you take a look, you'll see the same pink in there. They're the same design or not the same line. But anyway, I'm gonna back it and I'm gonna cut and sew the backing and I'm going to make the binding because as soon as my Christmas panel quilt is done, I'll throw this one on the machine. <laughs> okay, for this backing, I'm going to need 70 one inches, or I guess I could just go with two yards twice. Ew, gee, I hope I have it. I think I probably do. What do you think? I have it quilted, but you really can't see the quilting. Let me get up close. The color I put on it was called hazelnut, and the quilting pattern is called Sea of Stars. And I thought that was a very appropriate design. So I have the binding all ready to go, and I'm going to bind this quilt tonight. Now it is nine o'clock. I'm getting kind of tired. I think I'm gonna try and load this quilt, my plus quilt, on the, on the machine, but I'm not gonna quilt it tonight. I make too many mistakes. And after I bind this one, I'm gonna call it a night. This has been such a fun video to make, and I really feel like I'm totally benefiting from it because I finished four complete quilts, including the one behind me. And I'm pretty sure I showed it to you, but didn't this one turn out cute with that darling binding? My friend is gonna love it. This one I don't think you've seen. It was last week's video. Since I'm doing the pink binding, I used pink thread and flowers and there's flowers on the back. I thought that tied it in really well. Let me get this out of the way here. But my big takeaway was my project list. Write everything down and time yourself. Work in little micro bursts or 30 minute segments. If you wanna make yours a micro micro burst, work for 10 minutes. But it's amazing what you can get done when you focus on something on one single task for a period of time. And that's how I got through all of my whips. Did I get them all done? No, but I still have my list. I'm gonna continue working through it. And what a great feeling it is. So I do hope you learned something. If you did and if you like my videos, I would love thumbs up. You can share my videos 
or subscribe to my videos. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to comment and tell me what you're working on on your whips, we can support each other. That's another part of it. Let's support each other. Until next week, bye.